I Kill Giants is a comic book written by Joe Kelly from Image Comics. With this review, I'm not going to do my review like I normally do, but talk about how it contrasts with the comic. Similarities and the difference, but also talk about what I thought of the film. I Kill Giants is a story about a young girl, Barbara, who is very closed off from life and her family. She likes to escape in D&D and also Giants. She does meet a new girl, Sophia, who she becomes friends with. She also has meetings with the school psychiatrist, Miss Malay. The actress playing Barb is Madison Wolf. I think she does an amazing job at bringing Barb to life. She looks really close to her comic book counterpart from outfit to bunny ears. The movie does start off a little different than the comic. Instead of opening with her sewing her bag and talking about giants, we get her out in the woods setting traps for giants. Almost the whole beginning of the comic is left out other than the first scene, which they do put in the movie a little later. We get to meet her family, her older sister Karen, and her brothers. Instead of them playing D&D with her, like in the comic, they have them playing video games and calling her a nerd for playing D&D. I think the change of this still works for the film, since the rest of the scene plays out the same. In the comic, Barb does tend to talk to little fairies she sees here and there, which I thought that was odd. They were replaced with something else, which I'll talk about later on. Later, the movie follows the comic pretty closely, her getting stuff, going to the beach, setting more traps, and running into Sophia. They did make her British, which I thought was an interesting change, but I did kind of like it though. Fast forwarding to them at school, in the comic we see Barb sitting at a table with other kids, which seem like fellow nerds as they do talk to her. In the movie, on the other hand, she is sitting by herself and we see Sophia notice this. This is where we are introduced to the bully Taylor. In the comic, she's a big bully, and in the movie, on the other hand, they made Taylor a lot skinnier. It is a change, but doesn't really affect her character. The scene in the cafeteria does play out almost the same in the comic. After this, she is called to the psychiatrist's office. This is where we meet Mrs. Mullet. Zoe Saldana plays her in the movie, which I thought was an awesome pick for the role, and she does a really good job as her. We learn that this isn't something new to Barb and has been here before since she has a file. Mrs. M is new, so she is trying to get to know her more. When she tries to pry too far, Barb cuts her off with a strike one. I like how they translated this scene to the movie. It's almost exactly the same. Next, we see a second interaction with Taylor our bully. In the comic, it gets more physical, ending with a slap before being interrupted by the principal. In the movie, she only slams her against the locker and that's about it. After we get some more Barb and Sophia spending time together, where she tells her all about the different giants. I think the way they show it in the movie was really cool and interesting. They show a bunch of cinematics about all the different giants and all these different scenes while she explains it to them. In the comic, she explains the name of her hammer, Kovletsky, in more detail. In the movie, she only briefly explains it and then stops. I also do want to mention how closely they got to the beach in their house to look in the movie. It was weird though. In the comic, when Sophia says something to make Barb uneasy, she says, people close to me die. But then in the movie, she says, people close to me get hurt. Just thought it was an odd change. So in the movie, we cut to her in the woods setting traps for giants, and we actually get to see one. Never happens in the comics. But I did enjoy this scene. Instead, in the comics, she goes home, and we see her freaked out from her name being called from upstairs. But she never goes up there. You can tell she is scared of what is up there. In the movie, later, the same thing happens. Dark shadows like moving vines coming down the wall, the stairs, as her name is being whispered. In the comic... We see her dressed as a knight, and she is talking to her fairy friends, talking about how her day went. This whole scene never happened in the film, though. We do cut to the scene right after of her talking to Mrs. M. We move on in the comics to them in P.E. In the comic, the teacher has short hair and looks more butch. In the movie, she just looks like your average P.E. teacher, without being butch. When trying to talk herself out of doing P.E. and saying, you know, just give me the F to the teacher... In the comic, the teacher takes her bag after she mentions Kovleski. She says, oh, you must be a Philly fan. The way she gets it back in the comic is insulting her by calling her a dyke and a little bit after that, snatching her bag back and goes to the principal. In the movie, on the other hand, she just insults her about her job. I preferred the comic version, though I thought it was a lot funnier. After meeting with the principal, all the scenes comic to movie line up together. So in the movie, after Barb reads the note that Sophia gave her and she opens her bag to put it in there, and then she runs out from school after the alarm goes off, and then she has a little adventure with Sophia skipping school to show her some giant traps. Also, this is the first time we see Harbingers, and they actually talk to her in the movie. They never talk to her in the comics. It's only the fairies that do that. 
So I guess they just switched the fairies to harbingers for the movie. Interesting choice to go with them instead of her fairy friend. We cut to the scene in the movie where her sister goes to the basement and they have a little chat. I like this scene a lot. Even though it wasn't in the comic, it showed a lot more interaction between the two. Now back to the comic. Yet again, we go to another talk with Miss M. She tries to dive deeper into her life. I liked how they handled this scene in the movie. In the comic, when she's asking about something, part of it is censored out so we can't read it. In the movie, when she starts talking, everything starts to be echoey and muted. And then she storms out. After this, in both versions, she is spaced out. Later in the comic, Taylor blindsides her with a punch. They have a verbal exchange. Taylor tries to see what's in her bag again, and Barb bites her. Then goes to beat her pretty bad. We see Sophia try stopping Barb, and then not knowing it's her, Barb hits Sophia. But in the movie, Barb is just walking, and Sophia touches her shoulder, and she just hits her. I like the comic version a whole lot better, and for whatever reason, I feel like the movie was really trying to avoid showing Barb fight Taylor at all. I don't know why because I feel it adds more to the story and that she isn't just a pushover. We cut to her at home. Both versions are pretty much the same. Food, talking, arguing about school. Both end differently though. In the comic after the argument, Karen starts talking about something we can't read. In the movie, they just argue and she runs out. In the comic, we see her trying to say sorry to Sophia at lunch, but she's still mad. The movie, we don't see this at all. This is where they get the order different. Comics, she goes to Miss M first. Then we see Sophia being talked to by Taylor. In the movie, on the other hand, it's flipped. She also sees Sophia running out with Taylor and decides to follow them in the movie. In the comic, this is the first time we see Harbingers and they don't talk, but she thinks it's a sign that her stuff is being messed. In both versions, Taylor and her posse mess her stuff up. Barb goes to take her hammer out and notices it's not how it should be and then gets beat up. Later, she wakes up in her house. Sophia brought her there. Sophia runs out after seeing what is in the door. When Barb goes to leave to go downstairs though, in the movie, she just shuts the door that she is scared of. In the comic though, this is the first time we get to see what she's afraid of. We see a scary lady tied to a bed saying her name and then creepily crawls towards her. They don't show this in the movie, and I think if they did, though, it would have been awesome and creepy. Both versions, Barb goes missing and Sophia notices. She asks Miss M for help. They go to her house to ask Karen if she has seen her. Sophia rummages around in Barb's stuff, finds some stuff about her, and then a clue to where she could be. She goes to the gaming shop where she is at, in the back room playing D&D by herself. The argument they have in the comic, I think, fits a lot better than the movie, but both versions have their pros. In the comic, Sophia says, why haven't you told me about your mother? In the movie though, we still can't hear that word. I don't know why they went with this direction. In the movie, she runs out and runs into more harbingers talking to her. In the comic, we get a scene with her on the side of the road collecting dead animals for a sacrifice and runs into Miss M. In the movie though, before that, she goes to the train yard and battles another giant killing it. Later in the movie, we see she put a prank in Taylor's locker and she is pissed. Miss M goes to follow her when she runs out of school. Then just like the comics, she finds her picking up dead animals. Then in both versions, we meet as they are on the beach. In the comic, Sophia is with Taylor and friends and she is destroying her stuff. Barb runs into them, punching the axe wielding Taylor in the face. Then they hear a loud noise. They all see the Titan. In the movie, however, Taylor destroys her stuff and she just leaves before Barb even gets there. Barb meets with Sophia when she sees she's hurt. When the loud noise happens, Sophia hides in the boat and Barb sees the Titan appear. Comic, Taylor and Sophia are picked up by the Titan and then Barb saves them with her big hammer. Movie though, she fights the Titan alone with Sophia hiding. Seeing her big hammer in the movie was awesome and it looked really cool. The fight in the comic was a lot better though. She got a lot more hits in. In the movie, she only hits him twice. It was still a cool scene though. But if they stuck to the comic, she would have looked even more badass. In the movie after the fight, she goes into the water and then reemerges. In the comic, Sophia can't find her, and the next day we hear on the radio all the destruction that happened and that Barb is missing. Sophia, Mrs. M, and her family are at their home, and then Barb shows up at the door. In the movie, we just see Sophia and Barb together, and the radio doesn't say she was missing. I kind of like the comic version of this scene better. It was nice seeing all of them come together and be worried about Barb. Then in both versions, we finally get to see Barb go upstairs and go to see her mother. No scary things, but just her mom. This moment was very touching. This moment was very touching, and I loved how they did it in the movie. Very emotional. Both versions end pretty much the same. 
and it was very heartfelt. This movie was good, and I like that it gave you a lot of emotions, and it had a good meaning. Like how she copes with her mother having cancer, with hunting giants, how giants are really a symbol for her mother's cancer, and that's why she wants to kill them. All the tie-ins, like the name of her hammer, and how her mother and she bonded over baseball. Showing how kids struggle with a family member going through sickness, and how you can go through a state of denial and trying to ignore what is happening. This movie did hit home, and I could relate to what she was going through. I really liked the meaning behind the movie and the comic, the whole story. It was very good and emotional. I really enjoyed this movie and I would definitely give it a watch. This is why I give I Kill Giants an 8 out of 10. If you guys like this review, hit that thumbs up. And if you guys want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching.